Hello, welcome to What's Happening in Brazil. We begin with the week's latest news. A wave of protests has spread throughout Brazil after a black man was beaten to death by two security guards inside a Carrefour store in the city of Porto Alegre, the state capital of Rio Grande do Sul. João Alberto was brutally assaulted after a misunderstanding with an employee. The crime occurred on November 19th, on the eve of Black Awareness Day. Throughout the country, protesters took to the streets demanding justice and an end to violence against the black population. In some instances, Carrefour stores were vandalized. On the same day, Brazil's vice president, Hamilton Mourão, stated that racism does not exist in the nation. From 2008 to 2018, murders of black persons have increased by 11%. Three out of every four people killed in Brazil are black. Brazilian Sonia Braga has made it into the list of the 21st century's best actors, according to the New York Times, alongside names like Denzel Washington, Isabel Hooper, and Viola Davis. Sonia Braga became famous in the 70s, portraying characters in movies and soap operas who were based on the works of Jorge Amado, one of Brazil's most famous writers, and whose work has been translated into more than 50 languages. Sonia Braga brought to life characters like Gabriela and Dona Flor. The actress' most recent success was the movie Bacurau, which is critical of authoritarian regimes and showcases the power of popular uprisings. Her political militancy extends beyond the big screen. In the 2016 Cannes Film Festival, Sonia Braga and the cast of the film Aquarius took part in a protest denouncing the coup that removed President Dilma Rousseff from power. In that same year, Dilma, who is a member of the Workers' Party, suffered an illegitimate impeachment process. This November marked the 50-year anniversary of the Summit of the Americas, that say no to the creation of the Free Trade Area of the Americas, the FTAA. The idea behind the project was to make the dollar the continent's common currency and establish the United States as a priority business partner for Latin America countries and companies. In Brazil, social movements resisted to the implementation of the project. Alca, alca, al carajo. It was with these words that 15 years ago, in the city of Mar del Plata, Argentina, the defeat of the FTAA, the Free Trade Area of the Americas project, was decreed. The FTAA was a big judicial umbrella aimed at protecting the interests of American companies here in America. The FTAA would have also imprisoned us in a military sense. Those such clauses were not explicit in the FTAA written text. They were tied to a bigger project seeking to expand the number of U.S. military bases in our continent. Through the articulation of social movements and progressive governments in the region, the proposal lost its momentum until finally being scrapped. In Brazil, more than 10 million people took part in a referendum where 98% of voters voted against the FTAA. Internationally, the campaign against the FTAA was championed by figures such as Hugo Chavez, Nestor Kirchner, Lula da Silva, Evo Morales and Fidel Castro. With the FTAA's defeat, some countries in the region united under the ALBA agreement, known as the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America. ALBA has been facing enormous difficulties since the countries that comprise it are suffering attacks and blockades from the United States, but nevertheless have been able to establish partnerships with China and Russia, as well as African and Asian countries, which are important at this moment, showing an ability to create a sphere of influence fundamental during this time of resistance, which is necessary in a perspective of people's sovereignty. According to the experts, integration among the peoples of Latin America is still the best alternative to strengthen the region's sovereignty. This brings up the necessity of discussing an integration project for the peoples of the continent. And, in my opinion, this project has to overcome the paradigms of capitalism, because capitalism doesn't solve the fundamental problems faced by the population. In Brazil, stories told on the cinema screens and books are still, for the most part, narrated by white people. Today, we'll be introduced to the work of a writer who wants to change the scenario. Ale Santos is the author of Traces of Resistance, Stories of Black Freedom and Struggle, and uses fiction to speak about issues that are important to Brazil's black population. Afrofuturism is like this. It's a social, political and artistic movement for those watching films like Black Panther and Beyoncé music videos. It's a subgenre of science fiction. It has this power to talk about technology, about utopias, to talk about realities not yet experienced, 
utilizing Brazilian African ancestry, the black diaspora, black Africanism itself. So, Afrofuturism is this movement to showcase the black life experience, showcase our spirituality, showcase our culture within science fiction, which has always been whitened. Ale grew up in the 90s, a time when there were few black people in leading roles on TV. The way around this was to create his own characters, and from there, his passion for writing was born. Afrofuturism is the social and political insertion of black people into this debate about the future, within this technological debate. In this Brazilian reality of technological segregation, with more than 40 million Brazilians never having access to the internet, it's as if we are living in a country from science fiction, a dystopia. All these social issues can be translated through science fiction, through fantasy, which is what I've always believed in since I was a little boy, writing and dreaming. For him, reconstructing white narratives is essential in combating racism. We are in a world where people still inherit racist images and behaviors. People that think black people work less, that black people are less intelligent, are not good enough to be doctors. People didn't overtly learn this in school. This is reproduced through television standards, fashion industry standards. I want to be one of the bricks in the reconstruction of the Brazilian social imagination. It's a role you can't play alone. I've been putting a lot of effort into in some way helping showcase new types of protagonists in our society. It's time for Brazilianism. Eu sou Letícia Massula, falo aqui de Goiás. Today I want to prepare a salad in homenage to the Sertão, an arid countryside region of northeastern Brazil. In this salad I will use red rice, which is also known as Sertão rice. Here are the potato cubes, and the trick is the following. We fry sweet potatoes in room temperature oil. As the oil heats up, the potato gets cooked, then later it fries in the hot oil. It will be crunching on the outside and softy on the inside. While it's frying, I will prepare the other ingredients we will use in the salad. I will start with the green chips. I really like using cilantro in the salad, mainly its stems finely chopped up. It makes it cruncher, gives its texture and a nice flavor. I will also cut a good amount of pepper. I cook the rice only with water and a little salt. I drained it and left it all dent, and we will use it as the salad's base. The potatoes are ready, I'm gonna take them out. Here I have the rice the green chips together with the cilantro stems. I will also add the pepper. I add the pumpkin seeds to the rice base. I will also add a little grated lemon peel and a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil. Here is your Sertão salad. Enjoy the video! Then hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next week.